Market Watch had a very interesting Federal Reserve story today about how the Fed's balance sheet has crossed the $9 trillion mark. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet started growing impressively following the 2008 recession. It was around the $900 billion level prior to the recession, rose to about the $2 billion, pardon me, $2 trillion level post-recession, and has only grown since to the point where it has now crossed $9 trillion. What is the Federal Reserve balance sheet? Basically, it's a consolidated picture of all of the assets that the Federal Reserve purchases. Why does the Federal Reserve purchase assets? In order to stimulate demand in times of economic hardship. The idea being that when there's economic hardship, people are less likely to want to go out and buy government debt. They're less likely to want to go out and invest in anything, really. People like to play it safe and keep their cash on hand in a recession, which means that there are there's lower demand for corporate debt, which means that it's hard for companies to finance their growth. When they can't finance their growth, that means they can't run their operations. When they can't run their operations, they can't employ people. People get laid off. And so the cycle continues. So the idea of buying assets, whether that be corporate debt, government debt, is that you keep prices higher, which cuts some of these issues off before they become real issues. The problem with doing this is that you need to do this when there's a recession and then sell all that stuff so that the market can get back to its real baseline actual price. Now, I'm putting up this graph on the screen right now that shows you uh, on the x-axis years and on the y-axis the value in trillions of the Federal Reserve balance sheet. And what you can clearly see is that they did this in the 2008 recession. And as the recession cleared, as we went into this beautiful bull market that we've been in for now the longest bull market in, uh, in recent history, what they failed to do is sell off those assets. And you might be saying, why didn't they do that? Because next time we have a recession, now they're starting at a baseline of overinflated assets. Well, what are they going to do? That's a good question. That's a really good question. And you can see, first bump, 2008 recession. And then you can see, oh, they're pumping the market up more, pumping the market up more. Well, that's why we've been having this incredible bull run. At least it's one of the contributing factors. Obviously, it's not the only factor. That would be uh, far too much reduction for the complexity of the economy. But then you see COVID-19. Now, they were completely terrified, and rightfully so, that when COVID-19 hit, it was going to crash the economy on top of all these businesses having to be closed for COVID-19 pandemic because we were due for an economic correction prior to the pandemic. And so they threw everything they had at it. As you can see, look at that sharp uptick. That's two, maybe three 2008 recession responses. The question is, we still haven't had the economic correction that we were due for before the coronavirus pandemic. And you can see that they were selling their assets slowly because we were in economic good times. So the question is, what do they do when we have the next economic failure? Will they just purchase another multiple trillion dollars of assets off the market and thus cause the natural problem to get worse because they certainly won't be able to sell them during that time period because that would crash the economy even worse and slow down the recovery even more. So they have two options at this point. They can slow down as they are their purchases. They can hold them level. They can start selling them off. But the reality is we're due for an economic correct correction and correction in this instance is a nice way of saying recession. So what the heck are they going to do when we get to that recession? That's the question that this Market Watch article poses to us. And that's something that we're only going to see with time. But it should be noted that the Federal Reserve, which is a quasi-governmental, private-ish agency that a lot of people criticize for its extreme power with lack of oversight, could be making a huge economic mistake that could cost a lot of regular American people a lot of money and cause them a lot of distress in their personal lives. So keep your eye on this issue.